Well, certainly that's a reflection of the centennial year. And we, we feel that we are going to get significant sponsorships and donations um, because it's our centennial year. So that's, that's really the main driver behind that significant increase because you'll see that it falls away the following year, figuring that you know, some, some donors are just not going to stay on. They're going to want to be associated with the, uh, the centennial of the, of the, uh, or the archaeology. Um, in terms of the courtyard, um, yeah. Yeah, I will. Um, <clears throat> so uh, at this point, we are at the stage uh, of consulting with the city staff and our uh, future neighbors, uh, the uh, medical centers that will be next to us. So the presentation to city staff is scheduled for the first week of February, and uh, we have a, a really a wonderful turnout and responses from the city staff. So depending on the result of this consultation, uh, there might be areas that are problematic from the city's point of view that will be addressed, and, and therefore uh, that may affect the timing of our coming to council, with, uh, because what we'd like to come to you once we've addressed any concerns there might be uh, from the city's perspective, uh, from the staff, and then from our neighbors if there are any issues there. But so far, uh, with uh, uh, the, um, the medical group next door, we've had the regular meetings with them, and and uh, so and they will see the presentation, the final uh, drawings, and and then we'll take it from there. Excellent. Thank you for the update on that. On the same page, on the revenue page, I see the general emission fees going up. And I apologize if I missed this on the previous slide. For that, would be part and parcel with the anniversary celebration to not uh, a spike or a, an increase in emission fees. Because it's a significant jump from 2012 on WDW. Um, no, that is correct. It is actual attendance, again, bringing in block bus, bus exhibits and the centennial to be able to drive those terms up. And, and finally, on the, same, on the same page, the collection of management touring fees um, did very well, uh, obviously, in 2012. And then you're kind of going back to the averages from previous years and, and looking at your forecasts for 13, 14, and 15. So you go from 108 in 2012 and back to 60. When I look at the, uh, the slide on the touring, the programming, the tourism talks and the studio tours. It's, it's been a lot of activity as you alluded to, 3,500 3, adults. So, so why would that number go down, all things considered? I'm just trying to get a grasp of that particular line item. Matt and Deputy Mayor. Um, the 2012 budget, when it was prepared, it actually included a $50,000 revenue stream for the super auction. So to be fair, for a year over year comparison, you should draw 50,000 out of that 108, and then you see that it's a uh, more flat line. Okay. okay so that was a, a previous year's error, so I apologize for that. No, no, yeah, yeah, that's great. I, I'm not certain if it was addressed, that's why I was trying to yeah. get if it needed to be reiterated. So there's no super auction this coming year through you out of that being We may um still have some revenues coming because not all the works that were donated to the gallery, especially in the area of contemporary art, uh, sold and some are key works. So we are planning uh, later in the year uh, to have a small auction to try to generate uh, revenues for the endowment through the sale of those works. So, so but we are, um, since we're not exactly sure when this work is going to happen, um, I don't believe it's included here. Is it? We've we included some, figuring out that we would still continue to have some auction activity. Um, it's listed here as super auction, but really it's just the ongoing um, selling of works that are going into the service endowment. So we expect that to continue for you know a, a year or two as we uh, work through those donated works. And we continue to get those all the time. So. Great. Thank you very much, Luis and staff. And I look forward to taking part. In not only the World Film Festival for 2013, but uh, uh, other uh, events, activities, and fundraisers that have been part of in the past. I always enjoy myself over there. And it's always uh, good to see uh, a lot of people attending these events. So uh, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. And in closing, thank you, Louise and Steve. And to uh, the committee members and staff here today, and we've been um, very proud to be our representative of Council on the Art Gallery since 2003. And Councillor um, Powers joins this term also. Um, actually, Louise, if I can just close, I may want to ask a question. 
um, the three percent certainly adds a million dollars. Certainly gives the stability that the art gallery needs to be sure that they can continue with the programming and the running of the facility. Um, and as a member, I know that uh, all of the committee members work very, very hard. This is a phenomenal group of citizens and business people that, um, that are there and their heart and their passion is with the gallery to keep it going. I mean, and I think I want to ask Louise, if you will, again, please touch on the auction because you just touched on that these are donated yes. items that were given. So could you just embellish on that a little bit for my council yeah, colleagues? Absolutely. It's a pleasure because the donations for uh, the art acquisition endowment came from across Canada. So, so, uh, and uh, the large ma majority of donations came from artists. And as you know, artists, uh, we often turn too often to artists uh, to ask them for their generosity. But we also had uh, many collectors who donated. And the total value in donation was $750,000. Uh, and these uh, was assessed by uh, Sotheby Canada. And and uh, for the auction, Sotheby Canada donated and their service entirely free. And what was most remarkable is that even after the evening of the auction, Sotheby Canada continued to try to find purchasers for uh, for the works that were donated to to the gallery. So, so uh, certainly the success of this the, of of the super auction was due to the partnership that we forged with Sotheby Canada. Uh, and David Silcox in particular uh, to support this initiative. So this is um, will be very important to the gallery as it grows in future to ensure that we can continue to build the collection as it was built uh, until now. Thank you, Louise. Thank you. And I appreciate that. I think it's important for committee members to know, because sitting at meetings, I know that our own committee members on AGH certainly were out there uh, doing everything they could to, to bring in yeah. uh, contributions for this auction. Um, also, you touched on the Napoleon uh, show that's on. I hope everyone will take advantage. I will be going over. There's over 400 items, if I'm not mistaken, that will be on display. You might want to embellish on that also, Louise. Yeah, well, the Napoleon exhibition is a unique opportunity. It's, it's a kind of uh, exhibitions at a sort of partly museum-like exhibition, but also fine art exhibition. Uh, I think that uh, it is very rare that we can have access to a private collection of that uh, dimension. And it, what works really well, it's because there is something for every, anyone, you know, architects, uh, designers, people loving paintings, uh, the, the decorative art. I mean, there's really uh, something for everyone in that show. It's very accessible, and there are many tours that are given, and uh, our director of programs is delighted to take you through, and he's got a, an incredible talent for sharing information. So, so uh, I do hope uh, that uh, to welcome you to the gallery for that show. Ain Louise, thank you. I won't ask any more questions, but excellent presentation. I really appreciate you and um, giving information to my colleagues because I know what it's like sitting around the table at the meetings. It's very exciting. It's very ener energizing. And uh, even the design annex was a huge step for the gallery to take in the last year. Um, with very great trepidation, that was pursued. And uh, we are confident that uh, that will be a success. And I think basically my, my feeling of going forward with the design annex was to get art on the ground to the public as opposed to a big imposing building sometimes that seems to kind of present some sort of a um, you know, first look, some uneasiness for people to go into, but when you have it on the ground, people just walk in, they're much more comfortable. So appreciate that and certainly all the work involved from staff and, and the committee members. Councillor Marul, I think you had a question. I'll yeah. turn to you now. Actually, Thank no you. Question, just a comment. Uh, <laughs> let, let me thank um, you, uh, Madam Deputy Mayor, and Louise for the presentation. And I think it's it's timely, and it would be remiss of us not to acknowledge that with the art gallery in Opera Hamilton and the Hamilton Philharmonic and Boris Broad, these are um, really st a staple cultural uh, institutions in our community. And we are going through, uh, Madam Deputy Mayor, we're going through a renaissance with the arts community here in Hamilton. And it would be remiss of us not to acknowledge how much you 
and everyone else I've mentioned played a role in creating that foundation, which I believe now we're seeing secondary benefits from. And for that, I commend you and for being persistent in your advocacy for, for it to, re, to be maintained locally, but that of council as well for assisting in, in maintaining it. And I thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much, Councillor. Thank you, Louise. And you Thank know what? I got goosebumps, Councillor. I'm really, really happy to hear you say that because it is imperative. We are really lucky in Hamilton that we have such fine opportunities that we can support. Thank well, thank you very much. Uh, we really, really appreciate your feedback. And uh, as you know, you're welcome anytime at the gallery to share in our activities or any information you might like to have. So thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, now we'll move forward. Forest Brought Music Festival. Madam Deputy Mayor, Councillors, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure for me to be here this year. For the last few years, I haven't been able to be present at this presentation, uh, carrying the name of Hamilton uh, with me to centers in Europe and Italy particularly, where I've been conducting a lot of opera. As a matter of fact, uh, most recently uh, in October, I had the opportunity of uh, conducting the Va Pensiero by Verdi in the town square of Parma, Italy, in front of the monument uh, dedicated to Verdi, this is his home area, and uh, the 199th anniversary of his birth of Apinsera and conducting that uh, with the chorus of the Teatro Reggio, um, and a full square full of people, the mayor, the regional uh, president, and so on. So carrying the name of Hamilton with me is very important, but being here and being able to address you is equally important, and thank you uh, for this opportunity. I'd like to take a moment to introduce the members of our team uh, who are with us today, Ashley Stavokov our uh, PR, um, Karina Carr, the box office uh, person and the artistic assistant, Diane Clark, financial, Jackie Muir, development, Ardith Broth, executive director. Uh, the Broth Festival is the largest orchestral festival in the country of Canada, and sometimes we uh, neglect to trumpet that, and it's right here in Hamilton. Uh, last season was our 25th anniversary of the festival. This year we look forward to the 25th anniversary of the National Academy, which is the centerpiece of this festival. Um, often uh, people talk about the National Academy as being a student orchestra because we are subsidized uh, federally uh, by the national schools. Uh, in effect, these are young musicians, professional musicians, uh, who are who've graduated sometimes with multiple degrees and who are being trained as, as musical entrepreneurs here and therefore they constitute an orchestra of probably uh, the finest, most excellent musicians in the country. And they are mentored by principal players from orchestras right across Canada. So it's a very high degree of professionalism that we bring to the city. Um, I'd like, also like to underline that uh, this program brings in excess of uh, $750,000, three quarters of a million dollars in support from the federal and provincial governments into this city. Um, I uh, know that it's not possible for me to give you any idea in words of what the festival is like and so we've prepared for you uh, a video uh, that we hope will excite you and to give you an idea of uh, where your financial support is going. May we have the video please. Jeans and classics performed Kiss and Queen. No. Okay. <clears throat> Isn't technology wonderful when it works? <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, we had a program uh, that celebrated the Diamond Jubilee called Rule Britannia. No. And it was a wonderful occasion because I was myself awarded the... Uh, Extra copy of the CD. <coughs> it should be somewhere Brina, can you come and help? Uh, Diamond Jewel Lee medal uh, by Lincoln Alexander. to break out the chocolates that we brought from Beaner Monkey. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't. Thank you for your patience while we try and get this thing going. Perhaps uh, this might be a moment while we're trying to get it fixed. If you have any questions from the handout that you have that we, that Diane Clark, our financial person, can perhaps answer or that I can answer artistically, we'd be happy to do so. That's a great idea, Boris. Do we have any uh, questions from committee? Councillor Jackson. Madam Deputy Mayor, thank you. And Boris, great to see you in person today because Ardeth has always, I think over the years, she's been a constant with her team. And from time to time, we know how busy you are internationally. So great to see you in person today. Actor, for example. Uh, this gets going, then I'll just reserve the right to ask my question later, <laughs> Please go ahead, Councillor Jackson. Okay, no, okay, no. go, go. No, go. this is more important. Get that. Don't mean a thing. Thank you. If you it don't mean a thing, all you gotta do is swing. The festival had its origins 25 years ago, when at the behest of the then Mayor Robert Morrow, we did two weekends of concerts. It's grown immensely in 25 years to become uh, the largest orchestral festival in Canada. Uh, we perform over 16 weeks of programming uh, in a variety of styles, from Puccini to Pops. Uh, this year we did uh, two operas by Puccini and had an actor, for example, uh, play the part of Puccini explaining the plots of both operas. Jeans and Classics performed Kiss and Queen. Uh, we had a program uh, that celebrated the Diamond Jubilee called Rule Britannia.
Canyon, and it, it was a wonderful occasion because I was myself awarded the uh, Diamond Jubilee Medal uh, by Lincoln Alexander. And the program, the, the festival, f finished with a, a performance of Verdi Requiem, 24 performances in all, uh, featuring a whole variety of styles of music. We hired over 30 soloists, both international and Canadian, and we featured, of course, composers of the entire repertoire, but I think most importantly, 15 Canadian composers among them. talk a little bit about our website because uh, there's a whole list of things that I'm uh, giving you today but really you'd get much more if you looked at our website. It's www.brotmusic.com and we've received over 20,000 hits. Uh, our website is managed by a young and local company called Technological Solutions. Featuring the festival, the performers that are both international stars and local Canadian artists. Uh, the chorus, for example, that we work with is called Arcadi, and it comes from Guelph, but has professional singers within it. And we expand that chorus uh, with local singers from the entire region uh, for the performance, for example, of the Verdi Requiem. Uh, Val Tryon, who we're very fortunate to call a Hamiltonian, she's an international artist of great distinction, and she performs regularly with us as a soloist. Martin Beaver, for example, who is the uh, principal violin of the Tokyo Street Quartet. Um, we also featured a number of composers from different ethnicities. Um, Anastasia Rizikov who is a, um, a Russian a background, uh, Jan Lyshetsky, a Polish background, all these Canadians, by the way, now, Alexei Gulenko, a Moldavian, doing a lot of work in opera Italy, and uh, uh, she's a wonderful soprano and graced us with her presence and great voice, and also unique new Canadian talent. Uh, I'm thinking particularly of Anita Parry, a 13-year-old pianist, cellist, composer, uh, who...